Twin Cities Adventures here with our Bearded Dragon playlist. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about heat for your Bearded Dragon cage. As you saw in our habitat build video, we used a heat lamp in the habitat and that was great. It was like 20 bucks for the light bulb and it burnt out in three months. So what a bummer. So 20 bucks every three months, that's fine. But I went back to the store and they recommended that I use a ceramic infrared heat emitter. And this was like 50 bucks, but they say it's gonna last five years or up to 25,000 hours. I'll show you a quick little clip of what the light bulb looked like before. And now I'll show you the new heat emitter that we have now. And I'll show you. Here's the new $50 ceramic infrared heat emitter. Looks like that. And we have a 40 gallon habitat for Jormungandr right back here. So we have a 100 watt bulb because that's what they said they would like at the pet store. So we wanna give our bearded dragon everything that he needs. I'll show you real quick here that it looks like this from underneath. That emits heat, and then we keep ours in this housing here that we bought at the pet store. You can see that in our habitat build video also. And then we zip tie this down and keep this right up front here like that. And now this is plugged in 24 seven. This is the UVB light from our build. This is on a timer for 12 hours, and it's on a timer back here. And the big difference is that the, this does not emit light, so it's not as bright in the cage. So he basks under this for his health. He basks under this for the heat absorption. And then this is really important for our habitat. We have lights under here that are also on the timer for 12 hours and they just clip on the side here and those are for the plants which also lights up the habitat really nicely our plants are these cactuses that he chews on this jade plant that he chews on and the aloe vera back there that he chews on lots of bite marks he nibbles on them maybe snacks on them but they grow really well in this habitat now I'll show you a little update on the habitat. This is the log we found out in the woods. You do not need to buy one, but if you want to, fine. We have this propped up so he can bask under the heat. So that's nice and toasty warm. And then on this branch, he sleeps at night and he also basks for his UVB light, which is right there. And what we did back here is we propped this habitat area up with nice um, big rocks so he can't dig and burrow that down and then we put some of his substrate in between there because we don't want him tearing that up here's his food bowl easy to remove just like so it's wet under there that's where the springtails are there's also worms and bugs that live under there try not to disturb that too much every time we water the plants water goes underneath there also creates a healthy habitat same with under his water dish he doesn't drink much out of there. That's just for if he does or any other bugs want to drink a water. That's easy to remove and put back. And then we have a two-tiered habitat here. This is his moss and substrate. This is where all the superworms and dubia roaches live underneath here, probably under the log or in the log. We've seen our superworms, uh, they've cocooned and turned into black beetles which lay eggs that produce more baby superworms so that's good so if he wants to dig around in here and hunt for bugs he can he loves hunting for live bugs we also feed him a variety of things so we did move this out from the wall a little bit to give him a little more room back there and that's still nicely under the basking light and nicely under the heat lamp for him right there so he likes that here's the front view of the two-tiered habitat just like that and then we'll get Jormungandr out and we'll show you how he dings around in his habitat. Now let's check out Jormungandr. Samuel's holding him here. He's 
full size. He likes hanging out in the living room with the rest of us. And I'll show you his little basking spot right there. Nice big log. And here's his little deck, top deck here, so he can go to his food or water dish or go right up the back alley up into his basking spot. We'll just watch him for a moment. Then I'll just show you real quick how I water the plants. I just take a cup of water, sprinkle it over all the plants, make sure I spill a little extra here and there so we get pockets of moisture for the springtails and the other bugs. We do dig up pockets deep uh, within the substrate and we put old rotten food in there. And then later on the bugs come back and they eat that. So it's always getting recycled within the habitat. So that's it. That's how we swapped out our heat light bulb for the ceramic heat stone. So that was like a $20 light bulb that lasted for three months versus a $50 ceramic heat emitter that will hopefully last for five years. Make sure you give your dragon a few scratches on the head while he's basking under the heat because he really likes that. And there's a little update on our dragon habitat. Thanks for watching Twin Cities Adventures out.